you know, in between, you know, when we're practicing meetings, etc. Um, recapping situations, things that come up, reminders that he would like or wouldn't. And so um, I think a lot of times less is more, you know, let him play. Um, but there are certain situations where, you know, a reminder of something um, I think can, you know, just make sure they're focusing on the right things. Um, so I think that's ongoing. And I think every player is a little bit different. You know, each quarterback's a little bit different on what they like and, and what they want to hear and what they don't want to hear. And so uh, by and large, let them play. They're communicating the things that are, are most important and most critical for what's going on. What is your strategy towards using the, you know, it, it shuts off after 15 seconds. Is it, do you still want to move fast? Do you want to kind of maybe take advantage of the defense for when it, their, their clock goes out? I think it's a great question. I think that's something that we wouldn't really want the people we're going against to know. I'll probably answer it the same yes. way. You know, I think the mixing up of tempos is important. How each team, each opponent, what you feel benefits you. Um, I think the pace of play has always been something that offense is utilized to try to create an advantage, whatever that may look like, going as fast as possible or as slow as possible, just to try to win the game. And so, you know, we'll be ready to do whatever we feel is important. Do you think the helmet communication changes things more for the offense or the defense? Um, you know, I can only speak to our side, so that would be a question more for Kane and, and, you know, the defensive guys and what that's changed for them. So I think it's hard to say. I think, um, yeah, I think that's hard to answer that on what, it, what that's like from the other side of it. Um, so I'm not sure I can answer that. How comfortable are you in your team's ability to kind of win games in different ways on offense, whether it be grounding out the you know the ball on the ground or airing it out or going fast, going slow? I wouldn't I wouldn't necessarily use the word comfort. Um, you know, when you're dealing with training camp and progressing, um, you know, I think we have quality players at all positions, um, and we try to be tough to defend in all areas. And I think that's what great offenses do is that you know um, they can execute what they need to in the moments that. Uh, so when you have to run the ball, you got to be able to run the ball. If you have to throw the ball, you got to be able to throw the ball. And so I think that's what we're trying to build and create each and every day um, because different weeks, different matchups, different schemes that you're going against are going to you know, require you to, to attack a certain way. And so um, I wouldn't say comfortable, but I would say that we're building and growing towards that. What are you seeing in Brailsford and Laura's connection point this camp? I think just time on task together. And, and uh, I think the character of each one of those kids is fantastic. And so they, they both take a lot of pride in their jobs. Um, they all know that the communication is super important. Um, and it all starts with the center and the quarterback. And so, um, so far, so good. And that would be a good question to ask those two kids. But I think it's going great. Obviously, he's physically coached. But Kevin Oldham is a route runner out there in Paul Kemp. What did you see from him executing those routes? Yeah, I think, you know, every day Caleb does something to impress you. And every day there's still things for him to improve on. And I know... You know, Coach Shep is pointing those out. You know, in every moment that that you know Caleb's out there, he's being coached, you know, ex in, extremely hard. And so, a um, uh, lot to be excited about and a lot to work on. And, and we're super happy with where Caleb's at. And we know there's still even more for him, you know, to to grow and get better at. Um, and he's working on that every day. Um, what kind of, sorry, what kind of competition Good. I think you know. Um, you know, we have some really good young players in that room, and they push each other, you know, and they all um, have done a nice job, and they're all improving and growing, and so I've been pleased with the room, and, and yet, um, you know, like most of the other questions, there's things that we can do better, you know, and um, that's what's fun about coaching, you know, is to try to help them get better, and you see growth, you see progress, new things come up, new installation, new defensive schemes. You know, reps that they've seen versus this coverage, but maybe not that, or this pressure, but maybe not, you know, the other ones. And so, um, you know, the relentless pursuit of continuous improvement. I see that in the group, and their mindset's been great. They're supportive of one another, and so I've been, I've been happy with that. What do you want to see from the, the winner of the right tackle competition? Like, wh who ultimately, what will be the, the factors that determine that battle? I know this seems real simple, but the guy that plays the best, you know, I mean, the guy that plays well consistently, in all areas, um, you know, this is an unforgiving league. We all know that, you, know, you can't hide, you know, and so you, you need quality play up front. And so whether it's in the run game and pass protection, um, you know, I have belief in the players that are competing. 
Um, and now it's a matter of, you know, who does it the most consistently, you know, to the best of their ability. And so that's what we're looking for. In your experience, both as a player and a coach, what are some of the keys for quarterbacks developing chemistry with their receivers and tight ends? Communication and time on task. You know, I think a clear communication on the rhythm and timing by the quarterback, the route detail by the receivers and tight ends and running backs, um, because this game is, is one that, you know, rewards people that trust each other. You know, I think um, the anticipation that's required to play um, and to count on one another that where the, when the wideout runs the route, he's going to be at a certain spot and the quarterback's going to throw it at the right time to the right location. I think um, that requires trust. And uh, we're building that every day. Jalen talked about working with you and, and, and Kalen DeBoer trying to find the place that he's comfortable with and the place that he executes the best. How do those conversations work? Just having conversations on what you see and what you, you know. I think some of it kind of is, it reveals itself. You know, you, you rep the plays and, you know, we chart things and look at things and we see when he's making good, quick decisions or where maybe he needs to see that play one more time, you know, and so. Every quarterback's different. You know, we've had lots of different quarterbacks in our offense, and they all had different things that they liked. Um, and so, yeah, just communication, you know, and open and honest conversations. I think that's really important between a quarterback and his coaches is that he's honest about what he sees, what he feels, what he likes. Um, and we're honest about the same on our end, you know, and so that's been great. What kind of growth do you see from a guy like Emmanuel Anderson? What do you see from I think E-Man's had a great camp. I think we're, we're challenging him um, to be a consistent finisher on the ball. I think he's capable of great things. He's a great kid. He practices his tail off. He's been very explosive in camp. He can run. Um, and we're just challenging him to be a complete wide receiver. And uh, he has embraced that. Uh, he's a joy to be around. He always shows up with the right mindset, the right attitude. And so, um, yeah, we've been really happy with E-Man. There's still more for him to, to go get, but he's done a good job so far. From a coaching standpoint, what do you find you and your staff spending the most time on this point at fall camp? Details, yeah, the small details. Um, you know, there's still a little bit of installation that goes on, and there'll be some throughout fall that are real specific plays for specific opponents. Um, but we have a large chunk of the install, and there's a, a little bit more to do the next day or so. And now you're just going back to, you know, fine tune the details. E-Man's a guy that played some running back in high school. Do you see that in maybe his open field uh, ability? And is there anything that, for particularly his skill set, you can kind of utilize? Or I think you see E-Man just um, be decisive as a runner, and he's fast. You know, and so when he decides to go and split people, he can. And so that's what I see. What the conversations like between you and Shep as you figure out the roles? Ongoing. You know, each day you talk with one another on what you see, what you like. Um, I think we have a lot of really good players. And so, you know, the challenge is, is how can we maximize what they do well and put them in positions to be successful. Um, and we have a variety of types of players, big, small, they're all fast. Um, tight ends have versatility, running backs have versatility. And so, you know, who's the best at certain jobs while also understanding you can't be predictable and say, you know, when this guy goes in and throwing the ball deep or when he goes in to run the ball, you know, so you have to make sure that you're mindful of that. But uh, we have those conversations every day, not just Chef and I, but the whole staff about the different positions. Regarding the wide receivers, that are bad, they're all learning all the positions. And does that uh, start to come to an end? Do you start to slide deep or do you keep it going on? We move guys around for sure, you know, uh, and try to teach them conceptually so that you're playing the best players, you know, that you don't want to you know, stack really good players in the same position. So we try to cross-train people so that they can play all three wide-out spots. Tight ends can play both spots. Running backs can play in different, you know, uh, places on the field. Offensive linemen, the same way. You know, we're trying to train the inside guys to play both guards and center. Tackles play both ways. And so uh, I think that's important for us. And, uh, you know, as I mentioned with the length of the season, I think we need everybody. We want to make sure our best guys are out there and that you're not, you know, you, know, you want to put you know, the, the best people and not stacking behind each other. So you, you move guys around and try to give them an opportunity to, to show what they can do in multiple spots. We also work with Coach Lamar and actually have a scrimmage to improve on limiting like those pitch penalties on both sides of the ball. How do you notice your unit have improved in that area? I think we've gotten better. Um, you know, I think those things come down to focus and discipline and attention to detail. And um, 
sometimes when the players have a little bit more um, time on task with schemes, maybe they're thinking a little bit less pre-snap, and sometimes that, that lends itself, you know, to having some of those pre-snap or, or foolish penalties. But um, um, yeah, we're harping on that every day. We chart it. You know, we bring attention to it. I think you achieve what you emphasize. So that's certainly been a point of emphasis for us. Is there an area where you most want to see improvement from the next scrimmage? Yeah, I think um, just avoiding negative plays. I think that's always, you know, I think uh, staying on schedule. And there's lots of layers to that, whether it's a pre-snap penalty, whether it's a missed block, whether it's a poor decision by a quarterback or a receiver not running the right route or whatever it may be, you know. Um, and I'm not saying specifically on any of those, but there's a wide, you know, range of reasons why you may have a negative play. You know, maybe it's the, the play caller not putting the players in the right position to get out of a tough look. And so um, that's what I'd like to see us to stay on schedule um, so that we can just execute in normal down and distances and, and advantageous situations for us. Okay, thanks guys, roll tight.